episode 3. Okay, welcome to episode 3. So, uh, if you have been listening to the podcast, you realize that we actually missed one week of episode last week. So, to make up for this, we have a special episode today. So, NAM just happened over the weekend and literally just ended, I think, like yesterday. So, we, this episode, we're just covering all the latest news and happenings from NAM, la, NAM 2020. So, let's just jump straight into it. Okay. First product. First up. Oh, so we want to set a precursor. So, basically, we're trying to find, we found like some of the more innovative products that came out of NAM. La. So, actually, there's a lot of new, typically, every NAM also has like a lot of new like guitars, drums, but if it's the same thing, we try to avoid like just basically highlighting the same like new products. So we try to find more innovative products and they're more interesting. So that's that. Okay, so first up, we've got two new interfaces from SSL. So the SSL2 and the SSL2 Plus. These are just like two channel interfaces. Very affordable. Way cheaper than you expect it to be. Let's see the specs. So SSL2 has two in, two out, two SSL design mic pre, blah, 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 legacy 4K analog, color enhancement for any input source inspired by SSL consoles. Mm, headphone out, plenty of power, 24 bit 192, monitor mix control, balance monitor outputs with stunning dynamic range, USB 2, bus powered, no power supply required. So, okay, this one a bit interesting because it's the first time that SSL has brought down their sort of their industry leading kind of preamps into such a cheap and as an affordable kind of interface. So, that's that. So, now people like home recording enthusiasts also have the opportunity to have like the SSL sound, I mm. guess. I don't know how much hype the uh, SSL 2 to believe. Uh. The 2, two alone. The specs is okay, but the I.O. quite limited. La. If you're looking for something for looking for something like the ID for that kind of range, then you can consider this also. La. I think pricing wise is like two hundred plus, uh, 200, 300 HD. Uh. Two nine nine, I think, for USD. Yeah, in the okay, range if convert of... to Singapore dollars three hundred and eight for the SSL two. Then SSL two plus is three seven five. So two plus, right? It has a bit more I.O. It's only 2 in, but there's 4 out. So you actually get uh, another set of stereo out. But you also, got, you also got another set of like, a copy of the monitor out and a different set of output also. I don't know why it never showed the back panel. Let's see. Then we'll explain a bit more. So the 2 plus also got the, 2 plus also got MIDI output. So let's see. Yeah, so this is the 2 plus, 2 mic pre, 2 balance output, another copy of the uh another copy of the 1 and 2 la, but it's RCA unbalanced one. I thought it's the main main out la. Not main out, is it main out? Yeah, it's main out as a copy or so it's and another three and four also unbalanced. Then phones got two phones la. Then MIDI in and out. This the you buy the interface also comes with the plug some plugins right the SSL plugin plug yeah it comes with some like vocal and like some vocal and drums strip plugin then comes with like Pro Tools first comes with some loops Ableton Live and Ableton Live Lite yeah actually just basically another audio interface with good preamps so then yeah that's about it lah and it's interesting that okay I don't know how 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 good the preamps are but if it's like mm. from SSL then I guess it's the main selling point la. Yeah, I mean it, it <coughs> they say it's like let me see design micro preamps with SSL design la, but it's not saying design, like yeah, it's directly from like it's not the like the SSL same as a console la, comfort no, la. but the, cause it's like a lot enhancement button yeah, so I think that's the interesting thing is it's not a super clean kind of like preamp that you see from like maybe Audion or like focus right the kind of thing so it has like some sort of coloration mm -hmm. that you can toggle with the switch I think yeah so that's it so I think that's a, the selling point la. 
only thing is there's like no a debt for any expansion now. But I think cause like since it's like bus powered, they want to keep everything quite simple. So yeah. So you can just bring this on the go with a laptop and then just mix anywhere. So focus street jump street plugins. First tools first. Blah 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 blah. 1.5 gig of samples. Yeah, that's not a thing. You know, there's that all. Okay, yeah. So good next for up, solo artists, uh, I guess. Mm, it's like good quality writer. preamps to like color your expensive microphones. Yeah, or you just need to record one guitar, one one mic, that kind of thing. So next up, we have another interface from another competitor, Audion. Actually, it's not really Audion. It's, it's by Audion. It's called Evo. I think Evo is a new like subsidiary or is it a new new line of new line uh. it's a new line yeah so it's created by Audion and instead of going bigger they just like gone even smaller lah. so it's two in two out also looks like this there's an Evo 4 and Evo 8 basically very boxy design with like a big mm. big round knob in the center for I don't know to control what muscle volume uh. Should be la. Then uh so blah 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 blah. Got two inputs, two outputs. Yeah, that's basically it. Comes with this like green color microphone button. That if you press then you uh if you press it, set then, again, uh. yeah, it kind of like automatic set the game. So if it exceeds the if you start to clip then it brings down the game for you. So you can just like hit that button, go to your mic in another room or something further away from your laptop then you just sing a small part then it will just set the gain for you I mean, something already something already is present in like the army kind of interfaces with just like this auto set button thing la. so yeah they just made it into a physical button seems like this Evo is more for like basically simplifying recording for yeah for entry and more entry level kind of recording mm. so make, make it more simple for people to get into recording I think that's where a lot of people are a lot of companies are sort of targeting this area of the market yeah they're saying that actually technology like this recording technology is all being more widespread and it's more accessible la. so they make it they try to make it more accessible and eventually make people they just want to hit all the all the market la, all the like not even for recording la, even like you just like a normal gamer then you just you want like a decent or interface or your, your Skype calls or your in-game voice chat doesn't sound like shit then you can just you can get this uh, for podcasting streaming gaming home recording yeah okay not exactly very innovative mm. okay next. next up we have something from Strandberg Strandberg so True Temperament this is the first world's first True Temperament production guitar so, so far there isn't any like production guitars that come with True Temperament. So this is the first and Strandberg is the first to like adopt this lah. I believe this is like made in the probably Indonesian factory. So they managed to get like the factory to actually find a way to install this type of frets mm-hmm. easily lah. Yeah, like it was mentioned usually custom shop guitars and offer this kind of uh, frets because it's not easy to install this kind of frets. But the price point for this is a bit higher, but 3,000, it starts at 3,300. Oh, uh, 3,400 USD. Oh, expensive, yeah? Is it, is it stainless steel or? Yeah, stainless. So the bone and all is stainless steel. At stainless steel? Stainless steel. Uh? Should be stainless steel, I guess. Let's see. Uh. So right now, I think it comes in three different models. Three different colors, rather. Mm. So there's each of the, like, the six string, seven string, eight string, all has a different color, uh. It's a, it's a blue, brown burst and a purple burst one. Yeah. If you don't know what True Development is, it's the, it's the, like, the squiggly frets that look like, they are, yeah, just look squiggly. Though. So it helps with like, your, your the intervals to sound a bit better. Lah. Yeah. So it's, a lot of people mention that, okay, a lot of people say that True Development only works in a certain key. It's partly correct and partly not correct as well because Mm. as in true temperament is optimized for that one key that's, that's the correct part but it does also have effects on the other keys lah. so it sort of reduces the the errors or right, the tuning errors between the intervals lah. Mm. but for one particular key 
uh, it'll be more more sort of in tune uh. as compared to equal temperament your, your, that's how your uh, guitar is currently fretted that one has actually it's still it's still 12 tone to I'm not really sure yeah so, so the whole temperament, temperament thing is quite uh. complicated like, you can go take a look basically you're trying to correct for the the like, intervals you, know, when you play your G and the B string then you play certain chords and it always sound a bit out of tune it's cause like a fundamental flaw with like how guitars are made and how the straight frets actually don't really help that yeah but it's not just guitar it's for every instrument also have the same no, uh, that, that's different. That's temperament. Eh? That's in, true temperament is fixed. Uh, guitar. Uh. I think it's fixed guitar. Uh. Like if you, you tune, like every instrument tune to the 12th the twelve temperament thing. What's the thing called? 12th equal temperament. I thought like you, you basically divide the the like the frequency into like 12 different then you basically have a problem where we change the key then your your in different keys, you have different kind of like intervals. Basically, the whole mathematical thing like, is very mathematical. Like, let's say you have uh 400 hertz and divided by 2 is 200. But then in another key, you need to divide it. It's not a equal... The intervals won't be equally... like. It's like, a different thing already. Eh? Different thing, man. True temperament is, 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 is to fix guitar. Ah, Okay. Okay, so basically you can go find out what uh whole temperament thing is about. La. <coughs> I'm gonna go next product. Next one is the Roland VAD. Basically it stands for what's it called? Roland VAD. What's B B drums as the acoustically B drums acoustic design. <coughs> so because basically it's like electronic drums that looks like exactly like a like basically like acoustic drums lah. so even the kick drum the snare drum the floor toms all are full size so this this whole line has three different tiers lah. the top end tier one the bass drum is like a full size bass drum the floor tom is even has its own legs as compared to your typical E drums usually the, the floor tom is just like a, a like basically a pad lah. so the idea here is to really provide the same look it's something we discussed in also episode one, like why drummers are hesit- hesitant to adopt um e drums in their live live performances. One aspect is perhaps like the the visual aspect of the drums don't look like actual drums like, if you want to take like a normal e drum. So this kind of bridges a gap like. So there's three different tiers. I think the it starts at it starts from like two point five k. Then the next middle tier goes up to four thousand, and lastly four thousand eight hundred dollars. So quite interesting, lah. There's also a new module TD twenty seven module that comes along with this V drums. Yeah, so TD twenty seven KV V drums. The TD one still has like the normal Roland pads, but with like a with a new module, lor. The TD twenty seven module. Yeah. So. I think a lot of companies are tr- trying to move towards that, that e drums that really look like uh acoustic drums, and also the technology for modules are also catching up. Really, as in, it's getting the sound more realistic. Even like the Pearl Mimic Pro that has, has came out like a few, I don't know, one or two years back. That one it uses like Steven Slate drums, uh, samples, and the sound is actually very very good. Really, mm. it's actually it is like. It is exactly what you will get from like recording sessions. Uh. So it's already industry sounding drum sounds already. It's yeah. like the camper XFX of drum sounds. Uh. And you can have it in a live sound. It sounds amazing. I don't see why people aren't getting it. Okay, the next one we got the Fender Acoustic Sonic Stratocaster. So it's like a acoustic guitar that looks like a strat. It has a single coil pickup and like a sound hole with knobs and like a pickup selector. I think it's it, more like yeah. a strat that looks like an acoustic guitar because it's still a guitar in the first place. It's not meant to be an acoustic per se, I think. 
So here the positioning is a bit weird lah. Like, is it meant to be an acoustic trying to be a electric guitar or just both lor, in it's between. Both so basically it's like like it still has like normal electric guitar pickups. And also a pickup selector and also like normal electronics, but then it's has like a big hole in the middle. Yeah, but the bridge is like acoustic kind of bridge. But the headstock is like totally electric yeah, guitar right. kind. It's quite interesting, like, I think it's like quite a few at least they are doing something unique to sort of push the boundaries of guitar and make it like you can get quite a, like a quite a unique sound out of this guitar. Hmm. Blending like I don't know. Is that like Paizo pickups or something? Uh, actually, don't know what the pickup sector for. So I think you can switch between like um, like definitely one is the the bridge pickup. There's one bridge bridge single coil. Just above the bridge. Hmm, there's a three pickup system. So Fishman under saddle transducer, a Fishman acoustasonic enhancer, and then a magnetic fish uh, Fender acoustas, uh, Fender acoustasonic noiseless yes, magnetic yeah. pickup. And yeah, so you actually can blend between like um acoustic and a magnetic pickup sound. La. Yeah, so one of the knobs is like a mod knob that selects and blend voices. Then acoustic engine. But Fender this is not cheap, engine. it like starts at two thousand dollars. But I think it's a unique guitar that maybe studios would want to have in their arsenal of hmm. instrument. La. So that's that. Okay, next one we got. Okay, so, so actually it's a twenty nineteen product. La. It's a, it's a new tuning system for drums. It's called Dial Tune. So, so all the lugs are kind of like connected via wires. Then you just need to turn one knob and it tunes, tunes both hit simultaneously. Is it or something like that? Or is it one knob for one hit? Let's see. Use separate dials to independently tune the top and bottom hit. So you tune all the lugs at one shot. So whenever you turn the knob. Your, your whole hoop is like going down equally lor, so you don't get the, the problem of like having one lug looser than the other or tighter than the other so you can really swap heads very fast and you can get your get your shell to sound, sound really in tune and sound like very very uniform uh. yeah so now my problem now is it only has a single it's, it's, the whole system only works on their drum that they sell yeah, so say you have like a I don't know a bell brass snare that you like you can you retrofit as well but it's, it's like probably moment, I, think, to, I don't think you can do that I think previously they did but I don't think they offer the service yeah. but so now this Dow new snare is like $1,000 I think it starts off with like this is a maple snare or something yeah so right now they only sell this one product that has this technology so you need got one snare so six point five times fourteen eight ply maple snare. You're locked into their snare that that can provide the sound. But it's quite an interesting thing. So you do need to know how to tune. If I tone there, then you know don't know how to tune, then you know, this thing will just you can just tune with one simple twist of knob. Uh. Mm. If you want a higher tuning, just tune just turn the knob clockwise and you just tune you'll get you go higher. Then lower tuning just tune. Not really sure about how, how well you <coughs> it is the tuning also like since everything is like connected together, does it does like individual lugs still go out of tune from each other or like this whole system is like a whole thing moving at once so if it goes out of tune it's like going out of tune all at once or so so I think it's still see, useful yeah. for like as a studio tool though. yeah but you are the only downside is you're stuck to that that one snare sound la. as in one I mean if it works then you just <coughs> need one snare you see, one. you don't need so many snare but if you metal snare it doesn't have they don't sell any metal eventually snare, though yeah, I think it's shipping. They say here, all this place will be shipped before April 15, 2020. Kind so it's been out for a while, like. but then it's, it's apparently not being, it's not shipping fast enough. La. Okay, next one we got Two Notes Torpedo Captor. So this one is Captor X. Captor X. Oh, yeah, Captor. I don't know. Is it the same or it's Captor X? Torpedo Captor X. So this one is like um what is it? The load reactive load box. Actually got quite a lot of features, uh. Reactive load box has a attenuator and it's also an IR loader with like stereo expander, stereo reverb, a twin tracker, enhancer, voicing and a gate. 
So it hasn't. It also have like in the on the website it shows like this mobile app where you can actually control the settings and the IRs that you use inside lah. Yeah. One of features. I think there's the uh, there's a torpedo remote. And you can like select the mic position and all. Two XLR outputs. You can choose like dry or wet. There's like a little fan here also. Got USB. It's a MIDI in. Yeah. For remote control. Then. Yeah. The interesting thing is like the form factor is quite small. So you can actually bring your. Nowadays with all your lunchbox amps. Those that doesn't have like built in IRs. You can actually bring this. You can choose your IR that you like. Uh, even control the IR. Maybe be like a. I don't know. A MIDI switcher. And change the IR along with. The channel changes, so it's quite interesting. I think got some additional, like effects also. I can see where effect list. Effect list. Come with Features, some, some summary. Then twin tracker, <coughs> virtual guitarist. I think it's like a double tracker, a double tracking kind of virtual thingy. So if you're like a single guitarist in the band, you can have like this twin tracker virtual guitarist thing. To make it sound like it's double tracking lah. Yeah, so you can plug into like two different amps, two different, two two different. Amps or maybe just go into two different outputs on the FOH. Then sound like there's two guitars from on both sides. Yeah, yeah. So like a stereo trick. Yeah. Uh. Mm. How, how, how much is it? They, they say what's the price? Yeah. Twenty nine ninety. Yeah. Twenty nine ninety. Yeah. Can never really say the price, but it should be. I don't know. You go search. How, how much is it? The next product we have is the. The Behringer RD6. <coughs> so in case you don't know, Behringer has been like killing it, making a lot of like new, like making a lot of syn- synthesizer clones of like, like historic synthesizers. Uh. So this RD6 is one a bit newer. This one is like actually a, a drum machine. A clone of Roland TD606. TR606. TR606 drum machine. Uh. So I think it's quite a, it's a drum machine and a sequencer thingy. So it's quite a uh, uh, legendary product. Uh. Yeah, it's meant to be like a add-on to the TD3 which is like uh, another what's it? Uh, sequencer thing. Uh. TD3 is a baseline synth. Baseline. So all these actually the, the very interesting thing is that all these Behringer clones are very cheap right, and, for, uh, and affordable. Uh. So even their synthesizers like the what's it? The Model D that is the and all the Moog clones the all those are quite quite all priced very competitively, yeah. So yeah, that's that's where the, the huge draw is. Speculate the sub one hundred and fifty figure. Yeah, so quite affordable. Okay, next one we got the camper cone. Camper. So I think this camper cone has been it's a camper the cone spelled with a K la, so basically it's like a pun on the word C O N E cone. Yeah, so guitar this cone, cone. Camper cone actually has been announced in last year, twenty nineteen. So this year, I think they <coughs> they probably start manufacturing already. So they actually have actual products of the speaker and the the cabinet. So the speaker is made by Celestian. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a two it's a two way speaker. So there's actually like two moving cones in. Like coaxial speaker. Yeah. So, what yeah. it does is, it, technically, it, it kind of like, like it's kind of like a FIFR, but they, they're they trying to avoid it, like avoid the FIFR thing. I'm not sure is it actually like full frequency or not. So, so basically, it tries to model a, different type of speakers. Uh, it's like a, a XFX for speaker cabinets. Uh. Hmm. So the speaker can can replicate other kind of like speaker like your B30s or cream bags in this single cone. Not sure how it exactly works. It doesn't Kemper hasn't really said. Yeah, so the, but the works. processing is done in the Kemper and the the Popalo itself. Uh. So yeah. You can just fit this speaker alone into like any existing cab also. You don't have to use the Kemper cabinet. So if you got like a Existing four by twelve, you can just fit it with all four camper code and you can, yeah, emulate other speakers. Also. Speakers include up to sixteen imprints each with a different speaker characteristics. So probably I think it's like some form of 
so some form of, some form of EQ matching kind of thing uh, where they know the the base characteristics of this camper as in this cone speaker camper cone speaker then they measure the difference between this speaker and like maybe say a V30 then they apply that difference to the uh, as like a additional EQ I don't know how exactly how it works but that's my postulation so I don't know the other thing we don't know is also how well does it mic up if you let's say you have to compare this uh, speaker with a D30 V30 imprint compared to an actual V30 and you mic it up with a SM57 where it sound exactly the same because yeah, if you perceive as in the one to perceive it in the room will be a bit different from how you as in, actually mic it up because the fundamental design of the speaker is not the same as how a traditional speaker is this one is two way a traditional speaker is just a single woofer with like aggressively aggressive like high cuts uh. So it'll be interesting to see. But the thing is you still still lock in, you need a camper to use this. Uh. So if you have SFX you can't I guess you can't can't use it, right? As you you can use it but it doesn't you don't get the benefit of like having the different imprints. Uh. Mm. Yeah. It, it uses their own algorithm uh, so you, you need a camper to actually do the imprints. Other than that, no, not sure if you can just use with other Followers, maybe you just produce like a full range sound. Yeah, so the website they list all the different imprints. Mm, so you got all your, so your V30, mm-hmm. you got your G12, M Greenback, Creamback, Selection Blue, Selection mm-hmm. Anniversary, uh, Heritage, the G12 100, the G12T, the EVM 12L, uh, Eminence, got some Jensen speakers also, also got JBL. Oxford and Goodman. So the estimated price for the camper, the cabinet is in the 450 range and the cone is expected to retail in the US for 165 USD. Yep. It's interesting uh, for those that really want the M in the room kind of sound. Else if you are just happy with IRs and you know, I don't think you can need this. Okay, the next thing we can talk about is the Roland Go Live Cast. It's a uh, Production, pro production for smartphone live streaming. It's basically like a special mixer for smartphone live streaming. So it looks like this. It's like a white color rectangle with a lot of, a lot of buttons. Uh, let's see the I.O. So basically it allows you to connect one, it uses your handphone, cam- like handphone as the main camera. So you connect your handphone via a cable to this uh, switcher. Then it allows you to have, use another handphone and connect it via Wi-Fi to this like Roland Go device. So you have now two camera angles. Yeah. They can switch between these two camera angles with the buttons on the switcher itself. Then the switcher has like three different inputs. There's one XLR input for putting on your mic. I think mm. there's one line and there's one or two lines. Uh, line input. Yeah, then on the on the surface of the mixer also you have like some buttons. And I think you can trigger like samples and like like applause, some drum roll. Put some text overlays, that yeah. kind of thing. Bit so music. it's meant to be an all-in-one solution for live streaming on the like on the Go. Mm. Hence it's called Go Livecast. I'm not sure if it if it's like battery powered or is it like the yeah, I'm not sure. never really stayed yet. Yeah. But check it out, quite interesting. I think live streaming is like the Probably one of the more recent thing that is picking up also lah. So I think as a musician also, uh, it's one way to sort of interact with all like your your fans and stuff in the um, live setting lor. Mm, okay, the next thing we we'll talk about is the most powerful floor model on the planet. So this is by Neuro DSP. It's the Quad Cortex. Yeah. Okay, this product actually was announced just before NAM and it kind of created a lot of hype around it because the selling point is basically meant okay, in, 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 to re- rephrase it, what they mentioned was it's meant to be like a camper killer because it has some form of profiling technology and they say it's uh, it's going to be better than the camper they say better than camper man. yeah they say it's going to be better than other solutions out there uh. by nature they, they come touting that it's using some form of um. It's based more on the human hearing rather than like 
I don't know what the measurements put through the M is going to capture. Yeah, also they're saying that he's using the most state of the art. Uh, as in, yeah, they're saying it's the, the most powerful processor. La. But apparently, hmm. it's actually made up of, like, I think they're saying it's a two times Quad two gigahertz. Quad-core shot. Quad core shot. Quad core shot, right? Two gigahertz. Two gigahertz. But actually, during FAQ, they actually mentioned it's, it's made out of four different 500 megahertz core. La. To, together, then they say it formed a quad core. So the chips are, because someone actually asked, well, you can't find these shark chips on the website. So actually, it's actually the four 500 megahertz chips or something like that. They're, they're put together from this quad, quad core thing here. They add up four times 500 hertz and somehow you get two gigahertz. So, so okay, a, bit, huh? a bit gimmicky there, but yeah, that's, that's marketing talk. So, so the buttons actually doubles as a knob, la, so you can twist like all these foot switches. Yeah, so the whole thing is quite compact. Like there's a touch screen, seven inch touch screen. Then apart from that, there's no knobs at all. So the knobs are basically all your but your your foot switches now. So it looks very clean and neat. Uh. It's unlike got to I mean it's unlike the XFX where there's like a million and one knobs. Even your camper also has like, like ten thousand different knobs for you to turn here and there. Yeah. But then the thing that the selling point is like the the touch screen, oh. So it's a bit like the head brush has a touch screen also in the and the color UI looks like looks way better so uh, mm. probably easier to like route stuff if you try routing stuff on the AX8 UI wow, it's like you, you need some next level skills to do that yeah so you can probably use this alone without the desktop editor thingy I think and there's quite a few interesting features also so one of it is the the cap sim uh. it's using like it's like a cap simulator where you can actually move your virtual mic around the speaker move it further back. I think it's based on like uh, my postulation is like they use a lot of they can basically capture a lot of different IRs or different positions and like sort of interpolate between the different IRs. Uh. So you like say you move from left to right, they interpolate between that that yeah, I don't know then I think it's because it's based on the Miko that one. Really man? It's made yeah, uh, Miko make make for this. Miko and Nolly uh, made IRs for this. Mm, yeah, this one I really see. And we think that and, they claim that like it, it can be, it can run four different rigs. Oh. So you can run up to four like amps and caps. And because they are like stereo effects loop, right? So technically, if like you have three guitarists and one bassist in your band, you can run everyone through this quad cortex and yeah, you, you, you only need one pedal to do so. So like your guitarist can go into input one and two. Then maybe... FX return one and two for the other two bassists and guitarists. Then you use the output one, two, and the FX send as all independent output or something like that. Or oh, there's also output three and four. Yeah. So maybe each one have one output. So if you look at this back, you can see there are MIDI in, MIDI out, expression pedal, two expression pedal, 12 volt VDC, and USB. It also has like a Wi-Fi module built in. So if you want to, you can connect to the internet then directly update from there or like save your tones on the cloud then you can download it directly or something. Yeah. I think the whole point is to like facilitate the preset sharing. Uh. Then mm -hmm. basically you want to find new sounds you can just go online on the device itself. Like you don't need to plug to a computer to go and do firmware updates or you can to go plug to a computer to get presets. So that's quite a there's something new that I think no one else is doing yet, like having a Wi-Fi chip directly on it. Mm. Yeah, so the first 1,000 pre-orders has already has already sold out. So the earliest you can get it is probably like September. But since the first 1,000 sold out already, the next batch is probably in, what did they say, in, uh, October or is it November or something like that. Yeah, first 1,000 you need to ship out by September. Second 1,000 will ship up by November. You can already go, you can go on YouTube and see like some demos. Uh, they are like demos by Rabia and Neo DSP YouTube page or so. Yeah, Neo DSP. I think right now it's still quite early in the development uh, so they don't have a lot of M's. Mm. Like only, they mentioned that only 10% of like what they envision to have in the final product is currently inside. I don't think they even have like the profiling technology in the the prototype we need yet. 
Yeah. So it's still very early on and yeah, I hope they can de- deliver. Because the four input, the four rigs can be quite interesting. But I think right until now, they haven't really committed that. Hey, can you really, can you really run like four different M rigs accounting? It might be, they haven't decided on whether they are limiting the number of blocks for each type of, like maybe say, the M block, maybe it's only limited to two M blocks. Mm. So they haven't really committed to that yet. Yeah. So a lot of unknowns, la, but interesting. Okay, What's the price point on the... Uh, it's 1. 1.6 USD, I think. 1.6K USD. Let me see. So it's in the ballpark of like maybe say the slightly more expensive than 1.4K Euro slash dollars. So it's in the ballpark of like what the, the fractal FM3 will cost. Uh. It's more expensive. Eh? Slightly more expensive. Yep. It's 1. 1.599 USD. Yeah. FM3, yes. Yeah, FM3 price. FM3 you won't get like you won't get four weeks, uh. weeks uh. you only have probably one M block and yeah you probably only have one M block one M one cap and even like if you get SFX3 which is like 1.9k or rather 2000 USD you only get up to two M blocks two M blocks and two caps so you still can't get four M four weeks uh. so if really if they can pull you off it'll be quite a quite a unique feature lor so next up, we have the Line 6 Port Go. So the Port Go is the new iteration, new product in the Line 6 Port series. Uh. Previously, the last one we have seen is the Line 6 Port HD. So you got the Port HD 500 and all those. Then after that, the next Line 6 stuff was the, the Helix line already. Yeah, so the Port... Uh, but this, this Port... H- this port Go uses the HX model, Helix models as well. But I don't think it has all the, like as many M models as the Helixes. So, it's, it's smaller form factor also. You get like, up to 8 buttons here, and one small little foot pedal thingy. You got FX loop also. Guitar in, main outs. You got no, yeah, you got no like, XLR outputs. But I think one of the things that they mentioned is they were they literally limit the signal chain mm. to a certain thing. So it's like it's like semi fixed uh positioning of <coughs> Yeah. So you it's a preset layout. So you can have like one drive, one cap, one M in a fixed position. You can't really like move your drive after the M or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's meant to facilitate like a more simplistic approach to the tone now. so it's also try to remove the option par- paralysis and make it easier to get the tones right out of the box uh. mm. the, the user interface also is like uh, designed to make it more simplistic uh, rather than to make it very complicated you can move everything around too much flexibility also kind of hinders your creativity okay next time we're going to talk about the Rev G20 so this is like a lunchbox still M high gain like, like high gain to M la. so it has like a embedded two nodes torpedo embedded amplifier inside yeah it has an optional reactive load and comes with like virtual cabinets on board and yeah you can use it for direct recording silent playing and live performance without a microphone or like a physical cap yeah, yeah. so the, the main selling point here is the two nodes the ability to have your own IRs and your the two nodes IR and also have the realistic tube M sound in the field because it's using like a reactive load. It's not your typical just uh normal static kind of load. Mm. Yeah. Also I think it's like an, an like a headphone app or something. Is it to control the uh that that's to control the torpedo, I think. Yeah, the torpedo IR section. Uh, so you can control like what, what IRs are using, I think some 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 kind of power M simulation also kind of the typical thing that you get out of uh, to, torpedoes kind of uh, IR technology. Actually, if we go and hear some of the demos, the M itself really sound sound very good. Uh. it's super like super high gain. It can go super high gain also, but it's also very clear. And the form factor is also very. It, the form factor makes sense uh. Nowadays, you don't really have people lugging around like your triple rectifier bring around gigs mm-hmm. everyone is like just 
trying to go for convenience. That's why they're going for like air models like Campus, XFX to save up on them, those weight. Uh. So I think now having this lunchbox and with that kind of large amplifier size tones is really sort of bringing back that whole idea of using tube amps. Uh. And now also you can still have the, the best, best of both worlds by having the IRs going straight to the front of house. So if you have a, have a very consistent tone, you don't have to worry about micing up your cap. Yeah, so that's that's the the main selling point here. I think it's quite quite amazing. Mm. Okay, talk about M's having like uh built in cap sims. That seems to be the trend. So okay, this is not a new product, it's been announced in NAM twenty nineteen. So it's a diesel VHX. It kinda it kinda looks like a VH4 with like a SFX screen built inside. SFX3 screen built inside, a color screen somehow. So yeah, it's kind of the same. You got like pretty much like modern features in like a in like a smaller form factor of a tube M. Yeah. So that seems to be like the trend right now. Even like the the sure the sir, uh which one Pit Tonan is it? Or is it Mark Trumanti? You got IR Pit Tonan. Pit Ton. Yeah, Pit Ton M. Large box also. They got IR also. I think yeah, so the trend here I think traditional M builders are trying they have to think of ways to go and bring back and like bring convenience to the users uh. having a huge 100 watt hit is not going to be practical for them to use in live situation I think for studios still okay mm. yep so the PT 15 IR world's first truly hybrid M marine classic tube circuitry with a reactive load so reactive load also digital impulse response technology yeah I think if, if M makers don't in no bit, they're going to get phased out by like the campers and XFX. Mm. So they're going to get, get find ways to really excite the users to start continue to use Tube M's live. La. I think I only search the there's so recently this um M maker, uh the M called Hook. There's a hook wizard, I think. So this is quite an interesting M because uh Basically, your this M has like rotary knobs that can be uh automatically moved. Uh. So your typical your know, drive base travel mid knobs. You can set presets to within the M itself and you actually move the knobs to the to the preset. Uh. Mm. Let's say you have a preset that you want a low gain tone, you move to, you can set the drive to maybe drive to two. Then another tone with like a drive at ten. You can switch between that and actually the knobs actually move in in correspondence to your the preset that you're set on. Uh. Yeah, so you, if you have ever used like a digital mixer where there are like flying faders and modified faders can like move when you change scenes and stuff. So for this one, the knobs also move when you when you change your pre -sale. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. And it's, I think it's something that, that Tube M's have is, is not able to do. Because it, it only, the, I think previously Tube M's solved this problem by having multiple channels. So basically so, your different Sounds are from a different channel, so, but in here you can the uh, the drive channel you can have different settings in that same channel. Uh. Mm. You can use like a foot switch to like change different settings on the go. Yeah, it also has direct out with IR IR speakers app for unloading uploading caps and stuff. Okay, upload own caps. So it's very interesting. It's very modern, but it still brings back that that sort of traditional M feel. Like you can tweak your knobs on the spot. Mm. So I think yeah, I think these type of companies are the ones that. It's going, to probably, it's going to survive the yeah. technological search. I mean, soon every every M manufacturer will have at least one M with like this kind of features. Uh. Yeah. Okay, next time I'm going to talk about this. Boss SY1000 guitar synthesizer. Is this the one that the demo, the one? So if you go and check out the, I believe this is the one. There's a demo on YouTube where the guy actually used this in conjunction with like a MIDI pickup. Uh, and he played like basically pop songs the, the, he played pop songs lead, like the synth parts using his guitar la. this is quite interesting demo this is it's like a, I think it has three different synth voices so we can program the synth like the different voices to have like different uh, pitches and stuff yeah. yeah so the YouTube video in question is actually this it's titled it's from Endertons la. it's called the greatest product demo in history Yeah. new boss SY1000 synth guitar pedal so it's four minutes of this guy basically uh playing a medley of like pop songs. 
quite interesting. You can go check it out. Mm. Definitely the most definitely one of the more interesting product demo in I've ever seen from them. <laughs> yeah, definitely go check it out. Okay, next up we have a very controversial one. From Universal Audio. The lunar recording system. It's basically a, a DAW la. Yeah, it's basically UAD stick on the DAW. Digital audio workstation. So so it's free and it's coming in spring 2020. Yeah. So it's free for all existing Thunderbolt and Apollo huh? interfaces. It's not also mm. must have the must have the Thunderbolt ones. Yeah, it, it kinda makes sense because you need the hardware to actually use this software. Yeah. So, so even if you don't have the hardware attached, you can't run the software, right? Yeah. If you got your yeah, if if you got your laptop and like a physical Apollo like eight X eight X eight P or something like that. And then you bring a laptop out and you want to like mix your tracks on the go, you won't be able to run this DAW because you need the physical hardware to be connected. Yeah, so and also it's only for Mac only, yeah. So in the Facebook groups you, you can see it like there's a flame war between like the PC and Mac users. I think the whole <laughs> point of this system is to like is to bring the analog sound into the recording. Uh. So Mm. Like the UAD has uh, has always been trying to like push like for low latency live monitoring of like the analog preamps that is built into the the, the DSP chips of the hardware interface. But <coughs> I think by controlling the DAW portion, they can sort of like integrate their their software analog sound so- sounding software into the DAW and then control the lat- round trip latency all in the control environment. Uh. So they they somewhat this DAW. It's free because you can push like for for you to buy certain plugins to make, make it mm. sound better. So I think right now they have they're so, selling like the Neve summing. Yeah, so the built-in Neve summing feature is one of the the more touted aspect of this DW. Uh. So But it's not free, yeah. But it's not free. So it's the Neve summing thing will cost like 299 USD. Yeah. And then it also comes with like virtual instruments, uh. they have some like MOOC synthesizer and I think like some piano or something yeah I think then, just trying to sell the vision of like analog sound in the in the box la. yeah and also there's it has like an integrated multi-track tape kind of workflow or like some tape emulation on every channel or something like that but it's meant to use <coughs> live right like real time huh? it's meant to use like real time in recording because <coughs> already I don't know if like everyone else is making tape plugins and why do they still need this? Why do they need a DW on their own to do that? I'm not sure I need to ask them. Uh. Probably yeah. like it's to just integrate like the console console like UAD's console into a DAW lor. for <coughs> real time monitoring. Uh. Probably la. It's better integration. They can use a plug instantly and something like that. Not very sure. <coughs> Okay, so next up we have the Odyssey Review Plus. So, okay, basically this is like a, Odyssey is like a headphone company. And the Review Plus is basically this software that, that transports you uh, to like different recording studios. Uh. So you can mix, like in, you can imagine yourself mixing in like maybe Abbey Road Studios, that kind of thing. So the interesting thing about this is how they uh, sort of do this is by okay, the, the, the unique selling point is basically they customize the sound profile of these headphones to your ears. So what you have to do is basically take a photo of your ear and they'll send that photo to their own cloud server and then they have some technology to go and decide how uh, to adjust like the, the, the sound and everything to fit your own customize to your own ears lah. Then after that, you'll have like a, I know, different settings for different type of studio to virtually model the studio modeling and transport you to different type of studios. So. Yeah, but the, the, the unique thing is like the the customization to your ears. Because uh. every single year, everyone has a different type of year. You wear to, if you take the same headphone and pass to different people, they will definitely hear the sound differently. I think this is one way to sort of balance out and normalize the individuals ear profile to to sort of get their virtual modeling of the studio correct. 
I think this is not something that is uniquely this is not something that has been done by anyone else. Uh. Waves have their own sort of NLS thing. But the it doesn't take into account of like the, the individual's year. The physical year. NLS means quite NLS. NLS is more like a head, head tracking thing. Uh. Is it called NLS? Waves. No, not, not NLS. Wave, uh, what's it called? Uh, some... I mean, Waves also got the Abbey Road thing. But then it's all just like a fixed, fixed profile. It doesn't... What's the Waves one called? The head, head tracker thing. Uh, waves head tracker. Yeah, Waves head tracker. But Abbey Road, you got the thing... Some other one also. Yeah. Okay, and then my next up we have Access Analog. So this is like a it's a very interesting thing. It it's a, it allow it attaches like these actuators and like this machine stuff to your your to the knobs and controls of your outboard gear. La. And then you can like control it via uh via plug in it or is it like a plug in. So basically, it's, it's trying to bring like the, the access to a sort of vintage analog gear to <coughs> everyone. So basically, you can send your process audio remotely to a a studio that has this access analog setup. You can send your audio, actually tweak the knobs of uh, this hardware gear and process your, your audio through it. So it's like a virtual reamping kind of thing. Uh. Mm. There are actually a couple of like other companies doing this also, but this is like another one is the mix analog. Not sure is it by the same guys, but they have been around since I think one or two years ago. So you can book a session online, then you can get to use like their their outboard gear. You can just send your your mixers and like stems through those different outboard gear. So it's quite interesting, but quite hard to envisage how how is it how is it going to be monetized? Or is it going to be like, like I don't know how that, how that's going to work? And it also requires like the your your outboard gear to be all retrofitted with these um actuators and switches, so you can actually like people can actually remotely push like on the knob to trigger or turn the knob and that kind of thing. So it's quite interesting, ah. Uh. Mm. So it's bringing access to like such like the vintage gear to even the uh, bedroom users. Uh, are they selling the the actuator thing or are they selling the service? It's, it's I think it's allowing other people to buy the hardware and so set up their own kind of setup. If I'm not wrong. So I mean they they have a website they they are selling the service as well. For ten dollars an hour you can access one uh you can access their equipment oh. yeah but I think they are selling the actuators also right yeah so I think they want to spread, like they want to bring across to other studios then they can as you can once you go and break this thing up oh. then you just use your cloud service to sell their their own hardware that they have okay next up we have some sound ID by Sonarworks yeah, so Sonarworks has been using okay, Sonarworks has been known for their sort of uh what's the software called? Sonarworks, uh, uh basically it's called Sonarworks. Uh, it basically helps to sort of correct reference, your, is it? Sonarworks reference. Your your student monitors to get a flat response. So it has a measurement mic that measures the the frequency response of your room at certain positions. Uh, so it's like it's a whole test sequence. Then you apply a correction EQ curve to your speakers. So it's meant to get a fat, fat response. Uh. So this sound ID thing is, uh, okay, what they've written here is, it's sound ID, personalized audio perfected for each listener across any device. Yeah, so, so in summary, it's somewhat like a, they're, they're pushing like a music preset for you that is based off a huge sample size of data. La. So apparently here they say that they've actually taken into account of 39,000 person sample size to find out what their sound preference are like. So they use some kind of machine learning big data based sound preference and hearing tests and determine what's the uh, sort of best music profile or sound profile that can be applied to the music to make it such like, that it's better. Like a sound profile that like majority people sound think it sounds good. La. So they found like this profile which a lot of people think sounds good and then they go and use that profile and apply it to 
everything that you listen to. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to imagine why one would want to do that, especially coming from like a producer standpoint. Let's say it really makes a song in a way that the, the, in, the mixer intended it to be. Then now these companies sort of tell people that, hey, now we're going to EQ the song that the mixer had mixed and then make it such that you like it. So it's a bit a bit weird lah. Yeah. Imagine it's also the same thing is happening in like they basically TVs and like film directors. Cause as you know, some TVs have actually like um some kind of motion smoothing thing to sort of make the frame rate seem the motion seem more smooth. Like this using some frame rate trickery thing. So typically cinema films are filmed in like twenty four frames per second. But um some TV setting actually has a way to make it to sort of make it less like low frame rate-ish. But, but actually the, the setting is meant for like like sporting events uh, to make it look like like a bit more smooth. Though. Yeah, so it's and kind of like, like soccer on TV then like you can see all the all the movement more clearly. Uh, but if you use it but if you do if, if you leave it on and then you watch like like films and stuff and you actually you actually kind of like ruin your experience also. There, there has been a lot of like directors and like actors trying to get people to actually like go into a setting and turn their settings off. Uh. Yeah. So I think recently they just come up with like a new standard for that for TV manufacturers to adhere to. Uh. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. next up we have this one is uh, we know this. What's this? Audio design desk. So this one is like a basically a, a, somewhat like a DAW for Foley or sound design work. So you can go and see the, the demo videos on YouTube. It's it's basically the selling point is like oh they say that basically typically or if you want to do Foley or sound design work for a film, for one scene alone it will take probably a few hours because you have to go drag in your samples manually. So in the demo it actually demonstrated that you can do it in like ninety seconds. So it's it's all uh executed using hotkeys. So as a, the video is being played, right? He's like triggering on different hotkeys, like triggering like this. Basically, he showed like this crouching tiger and hidden crouching tiger hidden dragon scene. Uh. So he's like triggering all the different like swords, clanking sounds, some shoe movement, also triggering like different rises and hits and kind of thing on a spot. So it's, it's done in real time as he as the video is being played. So it's quite interesting also. Uh, like he can just trigger all this can really speed up the workflow. I think this sort of product that help improve workflow are things that yeah, really quite quite really catches our attention. Uh. And so it, it, it tells that it has some like some sort of filtering library management thing that can help, can help you sort of filter the, the library of sounds that you have based on like intensity, uh, different kind of qualities of the music that is not very evident from just like the file naming convention. Uh. Okay. Yeah, pretty much it. Mm, we can roughly go through like some other stuff from the Music Radar the website. Uh. I think we've covered most of the interesting ones already. Let's see what else. Maybe there's a lightning lightning go through. Uh, yeah, so we got new Yvette Young, Ibanez Telman. Signature like guitar. A, yeah, signature guitar. And slime green. Uh, what else? So Steve I also got a new Ibanez signature. The PR or something, isn't it? PR. Apparently like the, the signature hand grip thing has been changed. Huh? Yeah. So instead of the monkey wrench grip thing, it's like two two weird shaped thingies. Uh. Then we also have let's see. Mm. Any more new they need mini stacks. Any mini stacks, yeah. So it's like what? What's this? It's like a small amplifier thing. Mm. Actually, the other thing is also like Behringer has been releasing a lot of new mic clones, uh. So they've been copying like Shure microphones, like SM57 or Beta 58, the Beta 91, the kind of mics, all at a very affordable price. Quite interesting, also. Not very, not very unique idea, but. It, it brings value to the customers and I don't see why not. Any other interesting stuff? 
actually not many new products this year. Ah, uh, maybe perhaps. Uh, Schecter has like it's the first time Schecter this year they've announced new models, guitar models with Evertune. I think it's on the Benchy model. Mm. So that's the first for for Schecter. Speaking of Evertune, also, um, not announced yet, but Evertune also is working on like a bass Evertune thingy. So eventually, all your bass will be perfectly in tune, no matter what tuning you are using. So that's that's good also. Any other thing? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much most of the stuff. Like, if you all got any interesting mm. things that we left out, you can just comment. Yeah, comment on the comment uh, the DM us or site or whatever. DM us or leave a comment on the YouTube. Yeah, then we can maybe take a look at it and see how how interesting is it. Okay, that's pretty much it. See you in the next episode. Bye.